Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of this studio, my name is Adam. You guys have been asking for this review for a long, long time. So here it is, it's the Keiko Abe series from Yamaha. Thank you so much to my studio VIPs, Carl Spence and Luke Uyamura. Thank you so much for your support. And today's featured studio artist is, I have to feature him again, it's Charlie Neesmith. Thank you so much for watching my show, Charlie. If you don't know Charlie, he is Mr. Marimbology. Thank you so much for supporting the show. And if you'd like to become a studio VIP or studio artist, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Adam Tan, or you can click over here. I also have to thank another person for this video and that person is Jet. Jet is of course my friend who went with me to Malaysia. Jet Kanchong! Yeah! And he lent me these Keiko Abe mallets to review. I didn't buy these, they didn't send it to me. I never had a chance to get these and I really wanted to get them onto the show and Jet was like, oi, just borrow mine. So thank you so much Jet for your generosity and if you guys see Jet anywhere, uh, say thank you to him for me because he made this episode possible. So obviously we're all familiar with the company Yamaha. I mean, they make everything ranging from musical instruments to like boats and motorcycles. And when it comes to percussion, Yamaha is no stranger to making good products. Like I really like their five octave marimba. It's one of the cheapest and best value five octave marimbas on the market. Their four and a third Paduke marimbas are very popular as you saw in my cheap versus expensive video. But one thing that isn't as popular with Yamaha, especially in countries that are not in Asia, are their mallets. Yamaha doesn't really have many artist signature series in fact, I'm pretty sure this is the only one. They've got two other generic series, but their only artist signature series is the Keiko Abe series. And the Keiko Abe mallets are very popular amongst many people, myself included, because their namesake is obviously the creator of modern concert five octave marimbas. I mean, if you're a percussionist and you don't know who Keiko Abe is, you might need to find another job. <laughs> Seriously though, Keiko Abe is very well known amongst percussionists, which is why there's a lot of hype around Keiko Abe mallets, despite the fact Yamaha doesn't really specialize in mallets anymore. And the Keiko Abe mallets aren't actually that expensive. They're under 60 US dollars. I would put them towards the bottom of the high end of the market. So not as expensive as things like the Wave Wraps or the John Joffrey series or anything like that, but somewhere in between. The Keiko Abe series comes in 10 harnesses ranging from numbers one to nine. I know that's really weird, but that's what it is. So with this model naming system, two is the hardest mallet, nine is the softest mallet, one is a two-tone mallet, and there are two sevens. There's a zero seven and an S seven. So obviously I don't have all the pairs here. I've only got the eight, seven, six, and five. So the eight is this light blue one, which is a uh, very soft. The seven is considered a soft, it's dark blue. The six is considered medium soft, which is a green. And the five is this light green color and it's a medium hard. Now call me crazy, but I've been using these mallets for about a week now, just to make sure that I have the best information to give you guys. I think the hardnesses are just one touch under. I think the very soft, for example, is actually a soft and the medium hard actually comes across almost as a hard mallet. This is all obviously up to personal taste and you will hear the difference for yourself in the sound test later on in this video. The Keiko Abe mallets come in birch or rattan, but because this is Keiko Abe we're talking about, the shafts should be in rattan. I mean, come on. So for someone like me who has reviewed nothing but birch on this show, I'm holding rattan in my hand because it's Keiko Abe. You gotta do what you gotta do. Now in terms of build quality and general construction, I really like the design of the Keiko Abe's. I really like white yarn mallets because they just look so cool. And they really stand out on the marimba. Like when you're playing really fast, it's really good to see bright colors like this because then you can really see where your notes are going. It's kind of like high vis for the marimba. Whereas something like my Van Sizes, they're quite dark. They get kind of lost in the woody texture of my marimba and it's like, oh, I can't see. I really like the traditional style of this wrapping hat. It's just like two horizontal lines and all these vertical lines. Like it's a very, very traditional mallet shape. Definitely passes the studio squeeze test. I mean, look, like nothing, no give at all. It's a very nice head. But yeah, it's definitely a head I would trust. I wouldn't put it in the same league as more resilient mallets like the Van Sizes or stuff like that, but definitely a mallet that will last a long time if you take good care of it. As much as I don't use rattan, I really like this shaft. It's a nice feeling rattan, like it's not a really cheapo white plasticky rattan. There's even a slight grain on it actually. The text is engraved as you can see, and I really like my engraving. And here it's no exception. They have the logo, they have the model number, and they have Keiko Abe's name on the other side. 
just the details. And then here they have a little ribbon which has the colour designation. I really like it when mallets are designated by colour because then you can tell at a glance which hardness is which. Like you get the best of both worlds. The heads get to stay the same colour but you can still tell what hardness it is straight away from this little piece of colour at the bottom. And then at the bottom of the shaft we have this end here which has been cut off. It's not filled with like that black sort of filling that a lot of rattan mallets have. It is pretty smooth. It has been sanded here. It's got like a very nice smooth texture. So I think we can call this smooth ends make friends. You might have noticed at the bottom of these mallets there's some tape here. This does not come with the mallet, okay? This is Jets wrapping in tennis tape. And if you would like to learn how to wrap your mallets like this, I have a tutorial for it. It's in the description below or you can click over here. The shaft length remains pretty much the same for all of these mallets. I think it gets shorter for the hard mallets. I assume that's because you would use them for like two mallet purposes. And I just really like the look of them. So I'm digging it. Did I just say I'm digging it? I'm getting old. Now in terms of ergonomics, this is probably one of the best feeling mallets I've ever used. Like it is so comfortable to use these mallets. I don't know what it is, but they are just so nice to play with. In terms of weight, they are not a heavy mallet. They are slightly weighted, not a 50-50 mallet either because the heads are bigger than something like the Van Sices. But for someone like me who likes 50-50 mallets, this is sort of the extra weight element that I wanted. Like I don't want mallets that are like super heavy because I'm not really into heavy mallets, but these are just slightly heavy and I really like them. In fact, normally with tan mallets, I'd be like, oh, they're very hard to control because they go, Whoa, 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 whoa. they sort of wiggle sideways a lot. But with these, I don't know, the weight kind of helped me control it a lot more and I felt a lot more confident playing with these. If you can't already tell, I really like them. But yeah, I think these mallets work very, very well for burden grip. I know that's not burden grip because I can't do it. But I think the weight also works really well for Steven's grip. So yeah, not a heavy mallet, not a 50-50 mallet, but just slightly weighted. I would compare it to something like hmm, the Zeltzmans or something along those lines. Like a nice weighted mallet, but not heavy. And now we get to the important part of the video, which is the sound test. And of course, I had to showcase my new piece. I know you guys know that I'm writing a new piece and it's coming, it's, it's on the way, but I've sort of half finished it. And I thought I might as well show you guys in this video.
So what do you think of the sound test? Do you think the Keiko Abe sound good? Do you think they sound bad? Do you think they sound warm, articulate? Do you think my playing sucks? Did you think my piece sounds any good? If you like it, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I should probably keep working on it. But yeah, I really can't stress just how much I like these mallets. I think they're really good if you're looking for a nice mallet series, i.e. something that is warm, uh, good for like slower pieces, but also good for articulate pieces if you need it to be. There's just something about them. I don't know, they're like the nice mallets that I've always wanted, you know? Nice, warm sounding mallets with like a nice big sound. But they're not like really heavy, they don't have diamond shaped heads. And again, I have nothing against mallets which are heavy and have diamond shaped heads, but I just prefer rounder sounds like this. I like all of the hardnesses here, but I definitely have to give a special mention to the soft mallet, which is the MKA08, this light blue one. The Keiko Abe 08 is definitely one of my favorite graduated setup bass mallets right now. Like the Zeltzman 6 was my previous favorite. It still is my favorite, but I think I like the overall feel of this Keiko Abe 8 more. So it might be enough to uh, convince me to buy one of these. But seriously, this mallet gets the studio seal of approval. I absolutely adore it. I love the sound and the warmth that it gives to my marimba playing. It is just great. So my final thoughts are, if you are looking for a mallet series that is warm, but not like a super big tanky mallet that goes like boom, 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 boom. And if you're not concerned about price, although these aren't that much more expensive than standard mallets, but they are a little bit more expensive. And when you're buying entire sets of mallets, that starts to add up. And I have to be honest, of you when I first came across the Keiko Abe's I was like oh they're too expensive oh I would never buy these oh they're just so overpriced but you know what after using these for a while I think if you were to only buy these as your only set of nice warm mallets I think you'd be pretty happy so yeah let me know what you think of the Keiko Abe's in the comments below or if you own the Keiko Abe series let me know what you think because I would love to hear from other people and as always if you like this video please give me a thumbs up I would really appreciate it and we are almost on 4,000 subscribers so if you haven't already please click that red subscribe button below to keep up with my uploads. I am uploading every week still, no matter what, on this show. If you guys want to see anything on the show, remember this episode was suggested by you guys, then let me know in the comments below. I love to have ideas for what I'm going to film next, and I have a lot of things planned, but obviously if there's something that you guys really, really, really want, I will make it happen for you. Or at least I'll try, okay? <laughs> Some mallets are really hard to get hold of, but if I can get hold of anything you guys want to see on the show, I will do so. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next week for another episode of the studio. Good night.